seeing, yeah, they're like, oh, bear market one year, more people buying, great. Then quarter four, ah, again, more sellers. But then we get to the start of the cryptocurrency bull market in 2023. And Hex did perform really well along Bitcoin and Ethereum. We have more buys than sells. Quarter two, we have more buys than sells. Quarter three, Pulse Chain launches. But wait, do you, do, you, do you see what I see? More buys than sells. Huh? Wait, quarter four, more buys than sells? More people bought hacks than sold? Huh? Quarter one in 2024, also more people are buying hacks than sold. What in quarter two? Huh? How, wow. Like, is, is the data wrong? Like Ben ha must have something wrong on that. Like how, how is the hex volume bought all the time higher while the price is like dropping like a fly? Why does everybody say hex is dead? But I have all the V3 data in there. So like, especially for the last recent three years, today's data should be very correct. So ladies and gentlemen, I think this is not a hundred percent proof, but this shows you that if Pulse Chain would not exist, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and then rug, <laughs> rug him, rug him, remove. I shouldn't say it. Should we censor, end the censor him? Censor him now. I'm getting blocked now right. <laughs> on Twitter. Um, that's all we but, got for you today. Sci five and 5555. Five, five, five. We are out. <laughs> Okay, we are half we an hour into the stream, and I am telling you guys that without Pulse Chain, the we chat have just higher... dropped off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Yeah, we are objective here. We objective. We have to, we look at the facts. Let's look at them. After we have to play a hypothetical game here, right? We know Pulse Chain exists and Pulse X exists, and there is a lot of liquidity and there is a lot of training. Ink. But if you would not have that. And you would have more, more volume buying, hex volume buying all the time, and would be paired with USDC. We would just have a higher hex price. We would be in the bull market. That's why we are missing the bull market. And this confirms kind of the theory that I, 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 I think I said on other streams as well as I heard um, Alex, our Hedron guy, uh, saying, I, I heard him somewhere on the stream, uh, saying this thing that we are going down because we launched Pulse Chain. All those people um, who sacrificed their polls and, and for polls X got the coins at those values, at those sacrifice values. So they skipped this bear market I think at this at this point a lot of people know this kind of way this theory right we just never had data to kind of prove it um and that those people had those high valuations and they started selling so it's not like the hex people kind of selling it down it's more like the yeah the port sacrifices the ports x sacrifices and because liquidity was bound to E hex with P hex and then P hex with polls and then polls with polls X. Hard, according to Hall's Hart's uh, law, you pull everything with you together down. Even if on the native Ethereum chain, the native E hex has more buy hex volume, like in each quarter over and over again. So it's not a problem of people buying e-hacks on, on its native chain. So that's 
seemingly is not a problem. Of course, disclaimer, we don't exactly know what would have happened if Pulsechain don't does not launch. Would the hexagons then sell down the eHex price? We don't know that exactly. We can only play the game like looking at this data and say, what if Pulsechain just did not exist and exactly this would have happened. And, and just to clarify for everyone too, this is for eHex, right? This is not considering PX or anything. This is like if, you know, this is the more buys and sells uh, that have been occurring while the price has been going down, you know, the theory is the heart's law, everything bringing it down because there's so much, uh, you know, uh, the other coins have been going down. Otherwise, eHex has been getting more buy pressure than sell. Is that right? That's right. And while you can have more hex volume in buys, but if the other token that your liquidity is bound to is dropping in price, your US uh, D value can still decrease, even though there's more buys. So what's the what's the good news? Does that mean that uh, eHex shall shall achieve glory if Pulse Chain achieves glory? Is the inverse true? I guess. It, yeah, yes, the inverse is true. Um, if liquidity remains the, as it is now, um, but maybe let's also rethink of okay. Like some people would be now upset. Oh my God, why did Richard <laughs> launch Pulse Chain? If uh, now we, in retrospect, we could figure out that it's bad for us. Maybe that's the real sacrifice that we had to do um, so that um, we actually get a cheaper chain because, yeah, Ethereum's way price is currently down. But we are one and a half year into the bull market and we still have one and a half year kind of, okay, I don't know how long it will be, but they just like estimate it uh, for a while. We have another one and a half year and at the end, fees will be super high. So we need something like Pulse Chain. And, um, and for the future to have cheaper fees for an extended period. So that's one thing. The second thing is like, it's really interesting to me that when Pulse Chain launched, Richard, I think he still assumed that we are in a bear market. He only changed, I think, his at least his public opinion about that. Uh, this year and at the beginning of the year. Um, um, and so if he thought that he launches Pulse Chain on the bear market, then we could have just gone with the whole cryptocurrency bear market one more year because it, that's what it kind of did. It extended the hacks bear market one more year because it bounded its liquidity with... Um, with Pulse Chain, which did not have to endure it yet. So while the whole cryptocurrency is experiencing this kind of bull market, the people within Pulse Chain who are holding the core coins, the safest ones uh, on a long-term basis, they experienced another bear market. And this is why we are in the situation we are in. But the good news is, well, if we now experienced another one-year bear market, then maybe we are coming close to an end. And, um, and by seeing the data also for hacks and being quite positive, and as, as I came on last time and the time before, showing like what's happening, who is really emergency and staking? It's just a couple of addresses. There are people staking. There are people staking e hacks. They're staking p hacks. Um, e hack stakers are getting sophisticated because they stake big amounts of hacks now. They don't stake small amounts. They know they have to estimate the fees into the future. So they're um, staking like 10 million on average. So that's good news because. All of the e-hack stakers are getting more efficient. So that's the good news. The good news is the data shows positivity in activity 
while we can explain now the theory and show with data that yeah it's not that people got really tired of hacks and wanted to get out it's more of this kind of liquidity bounding dynamic and how the sacrifices happened we also mentioned uh something about hex i got triggered a little bit <laughs> hex missing missing the bull the bull run or otherwise how does this um i don't know i feel like this adds up to something doesn't like looking at this data seeing where you know maybe it, it didn't get to enter the bull market because it was pulled down by pulse chain launch and all that stuff too if, if, if that's true then what does that do is it are we just waiting for everything to just kick off again but like literally with market conditions i mean regardless of whatever wells and eth and all that stuff happens or like is there a is there a bullish or bearish case on this for hex well the 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 trend I mean, what we can see in this chart uh, is definitely that the buys did not vanish. You know, the the uh, the bulls are here. They're buying up the supply, and yeah, they're getting diluted due to pulse chain. But at one point, the sellers are out, and the prices are cheap right now. The price charts look actually well they look good they look healthy there's a lot of good things i'm not the biggest ta guy but you know if you're in crypto for a long time at one point you are understanding the charts better and what do charts help you to understand they they help you to understand when did the most of the sellers left when do the sellers have uh, yeah given up all their bags and don't have any more supply and when do the buyers have actually more money coming in so that's that's what ta is about you just try to estimate if one or the other um has more to buy or to sell right um and the charts look good there's resistance there is buying coming in i mean if you just look at on the Ethereum side for eHex looks looks great. And maybe that's that's why eHex also just went up because all the polls and polls X sellers kind of left. So if they don't drag down those prices, then while that's happening and nobody like is, you know, it comes to a still stand. But on the other side on Ethereum, they are buying eHex, then eHex is going up. <laughs> 